Panorama and essentially this is really shooting only for sound benefit. So we've got the sound of the loud healers and from then on it, um, the events just take over. I mean, as soon as the tanks start rolling in, it, it changes, you know. I mean, you've, you've just got to uh, be ready for it. And, and uh, I mean, by this stage, they've now heard, they've now heard that there's something coming down the road and they're all beginning to get ready. And in fact, here it is, it's a APC coming down the road. And the tactic was to send two of these in to, um, to find out how it was, you know, for the tanks that were just behind. And they're coming through at high speed, mm. trying to clear the students out of the way. Um, as you see, the students are reacting violently towards it, you know. I mean, it's a real provocation. The students up until this time have been fairly peaceful. Yeah. But uh, once the armour starts coming in, they, you know, they, they sense that it's, this is the night where it's all going to happen. So at this stage, you've abandoned any idea of getting your covering shots for Panorama and you're fully in there and engaged as a news camera team, which works in a different way, really, to a current affairs camera team, doesn't it? Well, I think, I mean, the, these shots will be used heavily in Panorama. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just that this is... Um, for Panorama, you feel, feel, film a slightly different way. Um, you know, you're directed and, and you think things through. Whereas when, you, when this starts to happen, it's happening in real time and you have to film it as it happens. Now, one thing that's always um, puzzled me about the way a cameraman works is that he's constantly looking through the eyepiece. Um, how does he see what's happening outside his field of vision, as it were? That's I my, my job in this, in this particular situation, whenever, whenever the situation gets bad. Because Ingo was just looking through the viewfinder, he can't see where missiles are coming from. And also the situation could change uh, behind us and he would have no idea what's happening so whenever it's dangerous I spend quite a lot of the time looking all around seeing whether it's getting very dangerous in this situation whether we should move back a hundred yards film from there whether it's safe to do that or whether it's safe to stay so um, it's a big part of my job in this situation uh, I I now have sort of got on a bicycle to chase after it. You're actually, actually filming on while cycling along? No, I, I, a Chinaman is cycling along, I'm on the back of his bicycle. Right. Um, because I couldn't actually keep up with this thing, it's going too fast. Mm. And, um, but, uh, you know... The quality of the pictures is, is quite astonishing, considering the pressures that you're working under. Um, do you have lighting, or...? Yes, yeah, so what we did was, uh, we had a, a student working with us, and I gave him the light, and I said, you know, when I say switch it on, switch it on. But he was, he was a bit over-enthusiastic, he switched it on more often than I wanted him to, actually. Mm. But, um, it doesn't re the camera doesn't rely on the lights. You know, they can get fairly good pictures out. Here I'm filming without lighting, and this, this, this APC is coming towards me. I'm behind a barricade, and I suddenly realise that it's destroying the barricade, so I've got to move back here, mm -hmm. or have my legs crushed, so I have, you know, have to move out of the way. And it, here it comes through, but it in fact gets stuck. And once it gets stuck, it, it, the Chinese just pour onto it, you know. It, it looks like an uneven contest, but in fact, um, if you've got enough people, you can... You, know, you can give one of these things quite a hard time. It was shortly, shortly after this, when, when Ingo was on the back of one bicycle, and I got on the back of another bicycle, and we actually got separated. And I found myself in a situation where Ingo had gone ahead of me, and I was desperately trying to catch up with him. These people behind the APC were running and surging forward towards it when it stopped. And whenever it began to move, they started to run back. So I was running into these people who were running back towards me. So it was very difficult to know actually what was happening. And it was only when it moved further on up that it actually caught up with them again. It looks like you are in the firing line there for flying missiles. Well, yeah. there, was, there was a lot of stuff coming over and I had to eventually move back a little bit. But they, they have now stopped the, uh, uh, they've stopped the uh, APC completely. And uh, they're about to set fire to it. Were you frightened at this stage? Um, I'm not quite sure. Well, fr I was frightened, I suppose I was, but uh, I wasn't really conscious of it. I was just trying to concentrate on what was going on. Yeah. It's, very, it's very difficult to try and think how frightened you are there because you've got so many things going on around you that you have to be aware of. And if you were frightened, you wouldn't be there. Was there any evidence of the crowd sort of acting up with the camera at any point? Um, I think this would have happened anyway, whether we'd been there or not. You know, I, I think that you know, once the armour came into the square, um, it was, you know, intense provocation, and, and I think the students knew that they were up against it that night. And this is, you know, this is, they had to fight. They were fighting for their lives here, right, really. How did the um, attitude of the students towards um, camera crews like yourself change over the period you were there? Um, 
initially they were very friendly to, towards us and they were very funny used to arrive uh, in a situation like this and they'd all clap you know and <laughs> a bit embarrassing really because when you were trying to film clandestinely um, you know the students all clapping would, would draw attention to you and you didn't want this attention to you know to, to being there being different from everybody else that was there as, as it went on they got more and more scared because the authorities were getting the upper hand and they would you know they wouldn't they wouldn't speak to us anymore and, and you know after this was over and the square had been taken by the authorities uh, all our contacts vanished and it was very hard to speak to anybody anymore were you tempted to intervene at any point well we we personally didn't intervene but um, John Simpson did um, we, we they were pulling they pulled this this guy out of the APC and they brought the bus up and they were trying to get him on and there were a couple of students with you know fairly big rocks and um, at some stage, John does intervene and say, look, d don't do this. What actually happened to these pictures then after you shot them? Um, we gave the tape to John Simpson and he uh, took it back to the, to the edit pack, you know, for, for editing. But, I mean, it's half the battle is, is actually shooting the pictures. The other half is actually getting the, um, the stuff back so it can be used. Because if you, if you lose the tape at this stage, you've lost everything. Mm. The, the danger is to get yourself you go into a situation and you, you, you realize that something very serious is happening and, you, and you're filming. And if you continue to film, you might um, shoot more footage, but you'll get yourself trapped and you can't escape with any of the tapes. So you've got to always be aware that there is an escape route to get the tape out. Pulling it out at the optimum moment. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.